Hi, I'm John, and today I'm going to be looking at uh, the Ubuntu Studio uh, 22.04 distribution. And I thought it would be a little bit different instead of just looking at standard Ubuntu, which I will do in my long list of Linux distributions. I'm going to go through one by one. And the idea behind these is to give people an idea of what to expect if they're coming from Windows going to Linux and just from an average user's point of view. I'm not a technical whiz. I don't know everything there is to know about Linux or anything like that. But I am kind of an everyday user. Um, I use Linux uh, Mint and uh, I've used Kubuntu um, as a daily driver, something that I always use. I've never gone back to Windows ever once I left it over two years ago. So I thought Ubuntu Studio would be interesting because it's different. And one of the things that I like about some of the ideas behind these new distributions is that uh, they're trying to shape them for people uh, in a certain way. Like with Ubuntu Studio, it's meant for creative types, uh, people that might be doing video, audio production, uh, music, um, photography, that type of thing. Uh, and then you'll have other types of distributions like uh, Steam OS, which I believe is used on the Steam Deck, which is uh, put towards gamers, that type of thing. Uh, excuse me. Uh, but it's kind of interesting that this is the approach that some people are taking. And I think it makes a lot of sense for a lot of people um, to have something that is more directed towards a certain uh, type of interest, that type of thing. And I think that would be a better way for a lot of Linux distributions to go. Instead of being, oh, we're a replacement for Windows. Well, that doesn't necessarily motivate a lot of people. But something like this, if you were a creative type, uh, might be a little bit more interesting. And I found it interesting. There's lots of things about it that are... Uh, different than just a regular distribution. And it's kind of curated for you. I mean, let's be honest. Um, oh, I didn't want to do that. I want to just bring up info. Uh, just a little bit about the system. Once again, I'm using an HP desktop that is 10 years old, a 500-314 uh, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And this is using KDE Plasma 5.24. And then also the kernel version, though, is 6.5. So it's a fairly up-to-date kernel, and that's probably because of all the drivers and that type of thing that it may need to be using for whatever type of equipment you're, you're putting in uh, to the computer itself, whatever types of input, that type of thing. Let's take a look at a few of the... Uh, uh, programs that it has. You know, it. I will say this, it launched very quickly and it was easy to install. It was pretty fast on the install and I love KDE Plasma. So it's a good look. It feels good. It's comfortable. Um, there's nothing I don't like about Plasma. And it's one of those things that on my daily driver, which is Linux Mint, I use Cinnamon just because of the stability and so forth. And um, KDE Plasma doesn't work as well on top of Linux Mint as some of the other distributions. So I've gone back and forth with Kubuntu and that type of thing. But Ubuntu Studio has a whole bunch of things for creative types. Let's just take a quick look in a, a menu item called Audio Production. It's got... Uh, Aeolus, uh, an organ emulator. Uh, uh, there's some things I can't pronounce here, which makes me think, you know, they should just have simpler names for these things. But Ardour, uh, which is a, a DAW, a digital audio workstation. You know, you could use uh, something else too. I mean, there's all sorts of different DAWs out there that you could use for Linux. But uh, this is one that just comes with it. You don't even have to think about it. And 
uh, some people may be using it uh, maybe on another platform, that type of thing. Also has Audacity, which probably everybody's used. Uh, it's got some plugins, some drum emulators, uh, uh, percussion synthesizer, uh, GuitarX, which is a, a virtual guitar amplifier. Let's just, yeah, there you go. So I'll probably plug this in with my, uh, my Firefly uh, Les Paul knockoff and uh, play it in here. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but I do find this to be intriguing. It's, you know, not something that um, I really particularly care for a lot of effects or anything like that. I like kind of the pure sound of a guitar, whether it's electric or acoustic, doesn't matter. Uh, but it's nice that it's here. So you get that. Let's see what else they have for audio. Um, it has an auto tuner. Uh, mixer. Uh, drum machine. A keyboard, virtual keyboard, uh, MIDI. And then uh, a music production suite that is LMMS. Uh, let's see, take a quick look at that. I saw this before, and evidently you can, you know, like a lot of other situations, make a complete uh, song, putting in different plugins or different uh, effects, and then also, you know, your drum track, and then putting something else on it, however you want to do it. Uh, I don't do that kind of thing, so I don't even know how to do it. Uh, but there's a lot of you out there that do that. So the audio production on this is all sorts of different uh, programs that, yeah, um, you could have gotten these all by yourself and put these together. But what makes this nice is a distribution. It just comes with all that. And so then you don't have to go back and say, well, I need this, this, and this, and I got to do all that installing. It just does it all for you. Now, you know, are these programs something that you're already using or not? Um, and if you're not, then you got a little bit of a learning curve and have to change what you're doing. Um, you know, but that's kind of the nature of it. It's something else I should say about the uh, Ubuntu Studio. If you have Ubuntu and you're running that, you can use something called the Ubuntu uh, Studio Installer. So you can install all these things on top of your distribution of Ubuntu. Uh, there's also music notation. Let's see what that is. Music score. Okay. Would you like to see these tours? No. Let's just see what it looks like. Oh, okay. So create a new score. Uh, title. Uh, John Bach. That would be me. Okay, next, next. Well, whatever. So you've got some different uh, things that you can add, and I. you can do a score. It'll put the notes up, and, you know, once again, I don't compose music, so what do I know? Uh, I used to be able to read music. Um, not very well, but I could... Uh, read it and get an idea of what was going on kind of like how I know Spanish anyway for audio production that's a lot of the different things and there's more here I haven't talked about uh, but if you're a creative type you'll know uh, there's a guitar effects processor look at that I like that so I'm gonna have to play around with that one um, not that I'm big into effects like I say I think it could be something nice and especially for Linux you don't necessarily have a lot of choices with that there's more choices with Windows on that so it really is kind of a standout with audio stuff uh, graphic design I know even less like uh, a virtual light table um, dark table you know I don't really know how any of that's done or what it I, I've seen light tables and things like that in industry but not something that I do so in graphic design they've got digicam of course gimp um, all these pre-installed image magic um, inkscape 
uh, LibreOffice Draw, of course, Paint, uh, a PDF viewer, um, you know, some, some good things that a person uh, who is manipulating photography or images uh, could work well with. And on video production, it has Blender, Caden Live, which I use and I like. Uh, then there's also OBS Studio, which I'm using right now. And then other things here that I don't know anything about. So uh, then it goes down to the more regular stuff that you might have, like browsers, office, that type of thing. But I think this is the kind of... Uh, distribution that has a lot to offer for somebody who's creative and doesn't want to have to put all this together by themselves. Or maybe uh, that they may have Windows or something like that, and they'd like to try Linux in a creative sense, and then they go back and uh, can dual boot this or something. Uh, you know, it all looks good because it's KDE Plasma, and it's very familiar if you've used the the plasma desktop it it not a problem there it just gives you a lot of options and i think you know just like um the the gaming like on the steam deck you have a version of linux on there for people uh to play games with and i think it's the same thing with this it's a a version of linux that is the same as the regular distribution, except that it is focused on a certain area. And I think, excuse me, I think you're going to find this to be something that might be more and more of a way for these distributions to break in. I think it's a good way to market uh, uh, Linux in a different way. I mean, I would even go so far as to say... Uh, Somebody could take something like Ubuntu Studio, modify it, and have a whole bunch of curated uh, websites and things like that in the browser, uh, other helpful programs. You know, you could take it as far as you wanted to. And of course, you could add those things yourself, and that may be something you do anyway. But it's a nice feel, you know. It's how can you lose when you're talking about KDE Plasma? It's a great great operating system and uh, you know it really makes sense to have something you're very familiar with and then going to be using it for a creative uh, sense you know uh, whether it's photography audio or video there's a lot of people out there that are much more creative than I am um, I'm an incredibly average user and I use Linux for everyday business, everyday personal stuff, nothing more than that. Um, but for something like this, it's a little more sophisticated and it comes in a package that makes you feel like it's a little more premium rather than just throwing a bunch of Linux tools that, uh, you know, you may or may not have tried. At least with a distribution like this, you know it's going to work well with Ubuntu. It's going to work well because they've included it on there. So it's going to give you, I think, less hassle instead of having to try and search around for different things. If you want to make the switch from Windows to Linux or add this on as your creative studio, I think it's a good choice and uh, definitely gives people a, uh, a nice uh, choice that uh, really wasn't available before. And I think this is going to be a trend. I think this is how... Maybe Linux makes more of a break, uh, just like the gamers with uh, Steam Deck or this with uh, creative types. I could see other types of interest, um, you know, really going forward with a distribution that is based on that. And talk about, you know, kind of a granular, kind of focused way uh, to get people to use something that really is better. So anyway, it's... Great. It runs like Ubuntu and uh, KDE Plasma. You could use it for regular uh, work, that type of thing. But this is aimed at um, people that are more creative. And by the way, on the bottom here, on the uh, 
the panel, uh, it's already got a lot of the most popular applications that have been pinned to the panel. So you get the idea that they've done all the prep work for you. You just need to dive in and use it. So anyway, that's about it for today. I, I do appreciate you listening and stopping by. Uh, I'm just looking at all these Linux distributions. I'm going to be looking at all of them, uh, one by one. And some of them, I don't, I'm not sure I can really uh, make them work. Um, you know, like I ran into a thing with Puppy Linux the other day, and I, you know, there's some distributions like that I'm probably not going to mess with. But I'm looking for something where an average user can be taken from one of the more traditional operating systems, Windows or Mac, and come over to Linux. I think you'll find it to be a better, a better way uh, to do your computing. And like I said, I'm operating here off of a 10-year-old computer, and uh, I could use this like it was bought yesterday. I mean, just saying, uh, Linux is really good that way with resources and um, just really well done. So... Anyway, that's it. I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon. Have a great one. Bye-bye.